today on Titan Sports Recap. Women's soccer faces off against the Utah State Aggies at Titan Stadium. Titans baseball's Matt Chapman has off-season surgery and the preview of Titan Ice Hockey's upcoming season. All this and more on Titan Sports Recap. Welcome to the Season 6 premiere of Titan Sports Recap. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Kaylee Krish. And I'm Alyssa Santiago. We have a lot to catch up on, guys. Here we go. This past weekend, women's soccer started off a three-game homestand. They beat the LMU Lions 1-0 on Friday and headed into their matchup Sunday against the Utah Aggies with some confidence. With only a handful of games left before conference games begin, the Titans look for their fourth win of the season. Fullerton with an early start in the second minute of play, a great through ball played from Christina Birkenrode to Nikki McCants, but Utah's keeper comes out for the sliding stop. Later in the half, still scoreless, Aggies Jessica Brooksby spins the Fullerton defenders for a shot. Keeper Lindsay Marishich is there to clean it up. Second half action, McCants on the outside is able to get a solid cross off to the center that skips past Birkenrode and cleared over in the net by a Utah defender. Later in the half, Erica Mazzo gets a strike from about 20 yards out but hits the top right post of the goal. The end of regulation, score remains 0-0. The Aggies came out strong in overtime play. In the first overtime, Utah gets a strike landing near the 6-yard box, but again, Lindsey Marishic is there for the save. Next OT, Utah has another opportunity in the box, but there she is yet again, Marishic with a great block. She would have four saves in the match. The Titans go on to play Washington State September 20th. This year, the women's soccer team has high expectations as they were picked to finish in the Big West Conference preseason polls first. Our Ariel Tujiyama catches up with the team and provides you with this women's soccer preview. The Cal State Fullerton women's soccer team is trying to put together the pieces to another Big West championship. The defending 2012 regular season champs are looking to their veterans to help lead the Titans on the field. Senior goalkeeper Lindsay Marisich, who has totaled 165 career saves so far, has described her leadership role from the net. Yet, the Titans offense lost some strong goal scorers last year in Stacey Fox and Anne-Marie Tangora, but they do have some experienced veterans to help fill their shoes. With all the experience and motivation that this Titan team has, you can be sure to find them making a run for postseason. Men's soccer has had a miserable past two weeks 
After losing to LMU and San Diego, Titans traveled eastward to face Cornell University and Colgate University. The result was not in the Titans' favor as they lost to Cornell 2-1 in overtime. Then yesterday, they lost to Colgate 3-1. Men's soccer record consists of one win and five losses. Titan Volleyball in the meantime is headed in a different direction as they competed in the Lone Star Showdown in Lumbuck, Texas. On Friday, they split their two matches, sweeping Nevada in the first match, then later being swept by Montana. On Saturday, the Titans bounced back and swept Texas Tech to improve their season record to seven wins and three losses. When mostly everyone is enjoying their summer vacations, two Titan golfers took their talents to Brookline, Massachusetts to compete in the 2013 U.S. Amateur Tournament. Mick, Mark Anguiano and Ryan Tetral both shot five over par with a score of 145 in two rounds, just missing out by one shot behind the qualifiers. The duo had a different way of preparing for the tournament. Into this tournament because it is the biggest. So, yeah, maybe uh, maybe just a little bit more focus, not necessarily more practice. I prepare the same for every tournament I go into. Nothing's really different. You go in at, with the game plan and try to come out playing well and playing hard and see what happens. This is really a milestone in itself. Cross country and track and field head coach John Elders is to become the longest tenured head coach in Cal State Fullerton's history. This year, he is entering his 26th season at the helm. He transferred to CSUF and a, as a student athlete in 1984 and worked his way through assistant coaching. And in 1988, he became the cross country head coach, replacing Jim Stewart. And he doesn't plan on stopping anytime soon. I mean, that's not really up to me, but yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, I've signed 26 one year contracts so, uh, over the year. But, uh, you know, uh, hopefully if uh, they want to keep me around, you know, I like to I like to do this for, you know, at least 10 more years. Or Even during the offseason, Titan baseball continues to make the news as the highly touted junior infielder Matt Chapman had surgery to repair a ligament tear in his right ring finger. According to PerfectGame.org, coach Rick Vanderhoek said he'll miss some of fall workouts, but he'll be fine. He's a tough kid and he's been able to play through it the past couple months. Now he'll get it operated on. It is believed that he injured his finger almost a year ago. Chapman played for the Times this past season and also played with the USA Collegiate National Team during the summer. For Team USA, the 6'1 infielder flashed a fastball in the 94 to 98 mile per hour range. Chapman should be back for the 2014 season. Class of 2013 Hall of Fame was announced recently. This will be the fifth class inducted into the Titan Hall of Fame. This year's inductees will include men's basketball coach Bobby Dye, men's soccer program's all-time scoring leader Mike Fox, and All-American gymnast Carol Johnston, and the team regarded as the greatest college baseball team of all time, the 1995 NCAA National Championship team. The event is on October 11th at 7 p.m. in the Grand Ballroom of the Fullerton Marriott. For more information, go to FullertonTitans.com. Women's tennis has been experiencing some change this offseason as Diane Matias was named the head women's tennis coach. She replaces retired head coach Bill Reynolds, who coached the team for 24 years. Matias comes from UC Irvine. There she served as an assistant for the 33rd ranked Ant Eaters. She graduated in 2007 from USC. Matias ranked as high as 32nd nationally in singles during her college days, and she can't wait for the season to start. Our goals is just every day to just get better. You know, keep putting in the hard work and keep improving. And if we keep doing that, I feel like the wins are just going to come. As it starts to cool down and the leaves begin to fall, there is only one sport that seems to be missing. In just four days, Titan Ice Hockey comes back. I got a chance to catch up with the team and see what they have in store for fans this season. When the Zamboni rolls out, you know it's time for Titan Ice Hockey. The pucks are dropping as we get ready for the 2013 season of college hockey. After a disappointing 9-21 record last year, big changes are being made on the blue line and defenseman Brandon Booth is optimistic. In the past, the coaches that we've had kind of focus on the offense because our defense has been pretty solid, but now we actually have someone to even improve our defense even more. So, um, 
yeah, defense is looking real tight knit for this year, so I'm excited. With the team looking ready for competition, what is right wing Ryan Cruz looking forward to the most this season? Actually, this is going to be my last season uh, ever of competitive hockey, um, unless I magically get in the NHL, which is probably not going to happen. So I'm just trying to enjoy it with the guys and really um, be in the moment with everything that's going on. And the biggest thing going on is the change to the Titans home ice. East West Ice Palace becomes the new home to the orange and blue. Ryan also had thoughts on their new facility. I would say that it's a, it's a great facility. You're really close and right up on the glass, close to the action. And um, it's not as freezing as KHS was, and it's, a, it's just a cool arena to come out and see. Anyway. After talking with some of the vets, they all agree first-year player Trevor Sigich will be their biggest impact. I feel like I got a lot to live up to, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to just getting out there and showing these guys what I got. The Titans are just days away from facing off on that ice. They believe their improvements to the team will not only shatter their record from last year, but they hope it will take them all the way to Nationals. Be there for their first matchup against USC at Anaheim Ice on September 20th at 8.30 p.m., followed by their first game at their new home, East West Ice Palace, on September 21st at 9.15 p.m. Good luck, Titans. Here we go. This week's Titan Timeline, highlighting the biggest games in the next couple weeks. Titan Volleyball heads to USC to face the Trojans on September 20th before coming home to take on American University at Titan Gym September 22nd. Next up, men's soccer hosts Grand Canyon University September 28th, and the Lady Titans have Gonzaga September 29th at Titan Stadium. And remember, all of our social media outlets, you can catch our entire video highlight library on our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com slash Titan Sports Recap. Follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at CSUF Sports Recap. Find us on Facebook for updates on all Fullerton athletics. And check us out on Instagram for behind-the-scenes photos. Follow us at Titan Sports Recap. Before we leave you, this is a truly great story. This happened over the summer. Former Titan Mark Covert recorded an impressive streak. He ran at least one mile per day for the last 45 years. He started the streak when he was 17 years old. The streak lasted 16,437 days. He covered more than 151,000 miles. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> Well, episode, episode one for season six is a wrap. Join us in two weeks for another one. From all of us here at Titan Sports Recap, thank you for watching.